Nick Zion heaved the trolley around and around on the metal floor with considerable difficulty. He'd been in Wormwood unofficially ever since they'd saved him, but this was his first real mission out in the field, as part of Team Ephesus. And heck, it had nearly botched up twice. He snarled at the trolley and gave the wheel a good kick. He hadn't expected it to help, but the wheel unclogged itself and he could push the whole of the Mr. Cannon over to the door. Finding the cannon in this place had been a stroke of luck, although Ryan had landed the ship on the exact other side of the complex, so Nick had sneaked through the whole place to set it up. Dodging aliens was just no fun. Speaking of aliens, the loud screeching started outside the door just as he had the gun into place. And then, the sound of gunshots. No doubt Erin was emptying both of her high-powered pistols into the Nedrak's face right about now, outside in the corridor. Nick squeezed past the machine and somewhat reluctantly unbolted the door to let it swing open. Sure enough, it was a Nedrak, and that meant trouble. Since Third Breach, Nedraks only seemed to turn up in swarms. Where there was one, the rest weren't far behind. The Nedrak sat growling in the middle of the floor, facing away from Nick. It hadn't sensed him open the door. Erin Castoria, only nineteen, was at the other end of the extensive corridor and closing in fast, squeezing off shots as fast as she could. Nick had to step quickly to the side to avoid getting a bullet in the face, but the woman was still a long way off. Nick drew his own pistol and took careful aim, but the Nedrak charged off towards Erin before he could fire. He allowed a harsh Chinese swear word to slip from his lips. Have you got the cannon yet? Commander Luther's voice rang sharply through the receiver in his ear. Uh, negative. Nick replied down the microphone as Erin fired a few rounds into the Nedrak's skull. The monster let out a keening sound, but didn't slow its charge. Erin's still fucking around. Ah, uh, <laughs> I mean, Lieutenant Castoria. The woman ran straight at the beast and dropped to the floor, skidding underneath its belly and firing until her gun was empty. Dark blood split from the wounds in the alien's underbelly and splashed onto her in thick clots. Nick stood in the doorway and squinted down the sight of his gun. The Nidrak was momentarily paralysed by its new stomach wounds. He fired a perfect shot to the back of his head and the Nidrak fell forwards, finally dead. Underneath the ruined stairway, to Nick's left, more keening, screeching sounds started to reverberate as the rest of the swarm began to move. Nick grabbed Erin by the arm and dragged her into the room, drawing all six bolts across the door. When the aliens came, it wouldn't be enough. He tried to lift the Thermista cannon off the trolley and grunted as he strained his arm muscles. Erin opened the metal ring at her wrist and spun the power setting to max. She flicked the cover off the line of bolts that ran from her elbow to the end of her arm. With considerable effort, Nick lined them up with the underside of the gun and slotted it into place on her arm. The cannon fitted perfectly, and Erin held it up with ease. What model is it? She asked, flexing her fingers experimentally. Oh, well, forgive me if I didn't check. Nick replied, plugging one fluid cartridge into the gun and clipping two more onto Erin's belt. I was too busy trying to save your ass while you played tag with the alien. She grinned mischievously at him, and he grabbed the backpack and threw the remaining liquid canisters in to take back to Wormwood Base as supplies. It's new enough to have a release mechanism, if that's what you mean. I guess it's only ten years old. Then he switched back to the radio. We've got the cannon, Commander. Well, finally. Erin wrinkled her nose. Oh, that woman is such a whiner. Our suspicions were correct. Kinase found the druid phenomenon. It's on the basement floor and breaking through as we speak. Shit! Well, yes. Get out of there and gather at the east side. Haynes, I want the ship over there. Stat! Yes, Mom. Ryan's voice crackled over. Castoria. You know what to do. Uh-huh. Let's get out of here, Nick. The boy didn't need telling twice, but he pointed to the door that he had slammed shut barely a minute ago. 
That's the only way out. Almost before he had finished the sentence, the aliens began to pound at the door. Two bolts were instantly shorn right off by the impact, and a third twisted dangerously. Oh, solar shit! At almost inhuman speed, Eren flicked off the many safety catches and preparation levels on the gun. Stand back, kiddo. It may have been Nick's first real mission, but he'd seen Eren fire the gun enough times to know he had to do more than stand back. He ran to the furthest corner of the room, flattened himself against the wall, and covered his ears. This was going to be big. The metal door received a huge dent as two more bolts fell clean off. Judging by the noise and the buckling, there must have been at least four Nedrax behind it. Erin's usually serene, mischievous face took on a darker glint, and she smiled a smile that always scared Nick when he saw it. Like someone else was about to get hurt, and she was going to enjoy it a hell of a lot. That kind of smile. She flicked off the final catch with a sharp snap and slammed the trigger. The fluid in the canister slammed through the gun, and the deadly shell flew out of the giant barrel, careening into the door and shattering it into hundreds of metal shards. The explosion in such a small space was so loud that the noise threatened to pop Nick's eardrums. His eyes narrowed to slit and was pushed even further into the wall, bruising his spine. Erin was fine, standing upright, her gaze still fixed where the door had been. After a long time, Nick stood back up and took his arms away from his face, head ringing and room spinning. Erin tilted her head to one side and looked at him oddly, the gun hanging weightlessly by her side. One day, Nick managed to chatter. You will realize how much mayhem you caused with that thing. Erin looked surprised and stared down at the cannon curiously. Really? Really. He stumbled past her and looked to the gaping hole where the door had been. The wreckage left over could hardly be recognized as alien body parts. Not for the first time, Nick shivered and looked cautiously at the Themistic cannon. He didn't like the thought of something like that being strapped onto the arm of someone nice like Erin, because one day it might back itself up and explode on her. Erin tilted her head again. There was no trace of that menacing smile from only seconds ago. What? Nick cleared his head. Nothing. He turned to go, stepping gingerly over the alien remains that were melted into the floor tiles. Where in Urvia's name are you two? Luther spat down the radio. Erin winced. Oh, always with the shouting. That woman is dear to my heart, but God, she has a voice like thunder! Erin switched her microphone on. We, uh, got waylaid, Commander. The damn thing is manifesting and you're standing right on top of it! Move it! I don't want that kid caught up in this, Castoria! I'm not a kid. Nick mumbled to himself, unconvincingly. Erin looked around, remembering the way she had come. It'll take too long that way, Nick. We'll take the stairs. Nick could name many reasons why this was a stupid suggestion. Not only did that mean going down to the level where the Nedrax were coming from, but the further down they went, the closer they would be to the druid. Nick had never seen the phenomenon in action, but he was sure that he only ever wanted to see it from a distance. Also, the stairs were in fact rather non-existent. Years of neglect and new alien tenants had long since destroyed them. What Erin was referring to was some twisted metal and the dark pit that had once been a stairwell. I think we can chance the other way. <clears throat> He didn't have time to finish protesting as Erin grabbed him around the middle with her free arm and leapt down the hole without another second's pause. They landed, with a minimum of injuries, because the stairwell hadn't been nearly so deep as Nick had first thought. Huh, we're okay. His ankles both twinged, but other than that, Erin had done a good job of hauling them over without damage. She winked at him in the dim light. Not just a pretty face. Now, where's that door? <laughs>